Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to the Art of Fridays. Uh, our speaker today is Dr. Bolash Mayor. Uh, he is a senior research fellow at the Extreme Light Infrastructure at the Second Light Pulse Source, or LI Alps. And he is leading the high repetition rate at the Second Sources Group and is an assistant professor at the University of Seged. He obtained his PhD at the same university in 2017 with a thesis on theoretical and experimental analysis of phase and polarization changes of ultra short laser pulses upon focusing. And in parallel, he got involved in the activities of the research group of Kathleen Vajou, focusing on optimization of photosecond pulse sources based on high harmonic generations in gases. And afterwards, he joined uh, the team of Eli Alps in the first year visiting different groups as a guest researchers in Europe, for instance, at Lund University, MBI Berlin, and Institut Lumière Matière in Lyon. And since 2020, he has been leading the development, operation, and research activity of two at second beamlines at ELI Alps. In 2021, the editorial board of Journal of Physics B has selected him as one emerging leader in AMO science. And from this year, he's sharing the short wavelength sources and other second uh, high field physics technical group of Optica. Uh, before we start, I would also like uh, to thank him for accepting the invitation and to thank the team because we all forgot it was a holiday. You can see some of us are outside. Mine is fake, by the way, but some of us are outside for real. Uh, it's a glorious day. Uh, and we are still here, uh, ready to listen to some nice physics uh, and bring some nice physics to you. Dr. Mayo is going to talk about development of photosecond beamlines driven by cutting edge lasers. So do feel free to start. The floor is yours. Thank you very much. Uh, I want to thank, first of all, uh, for the opportunity and, and really uh, for inviting me uh, and upgrading uh, my uh, talk to a full uh, seminar. Uh, I'm really, really grateful. And uh, as you told, I'm going to talk about uh, development of uh, at the second beam lines driven by cutting edge high power lasers, uh, specifically focusing on the topic I originally proposed uh, for this seminar on the generation medium on the gas target that is used for, for high harmonic generation. So uh, the outline of my talk is, is the following. First, I will give a short uh, introduction uh, on high harmonic generation in gases, starting with the single atom picture, which I think uh, all the attendees know pretty well, but it's always too good to start with something simple so we can uh, make sure that we are on the same page. Then I will say a few words about macroscopic aspects of uh, high harmonic generation, that is phase matching and absorption. Uh, this I will use to introduce uh, the results, introduce the tool set necessary to, to talk about the results uh, that I'm uh, going to summarize in the second part of my talk, which will be about uh, high harmonic generation in absorptive medium. Uh, first, I will start with, with uh, some optimization guidelines in an ideal gas medium, which has been formulated decades ago for high harmonic generation uh, in a medium that has a constant pressure profile. Then I will move this analysis a step forward uh, to study uh, how uh, the medium in which the harmonics are generated, how the pressure gradients and pressure changes affect the high harmonic generation and the extreme ultraviolet photon flux uh, that we can reach with this kind of at the second source. And uh, this part will be uh, finished by an example medium design based on the simple equations I give and an example that has been done here at uh, Eli Alps. Then I will use this opportunity, uh, the presentation of this simple uh, example uh, to move towards uh, a topic that is uh, more described by the title that I gave, how HAG can be done with high power cutting edge lasers, or what are the considers, considerations that have to be taken when someone design a guest target uh, for the at the second source, and one, what someone should consider, uh, how, what kind of laser beam 
consideration someone should take uh, during designing such a beam line. And uh, finally, I will give a quick outlook on what uh, we are working on uh, at Eli Alps and, and uh, with, through some examples that we see uh, in other laboratories around, uh, uh, from the world, uh, how they are progressing with uh, developing high power uh, at the second beam lines using cutting edge lasers. So uh, let's start uh, with the principles, the single atom picture of high harmonic generation in gases. I think it is pretty well known that uh, to generate high order harmonics, you have to focus an infrared few cycle or short femtosecond laser pulse into a gas medium. Uh, and in this gas medium, uh, there are the targets, usually noble gas atoms. And the interaction that happens between the laser pulse and these atoms are uh, describable uh, by a single three-step model, uh, which consists of the following uh, steps uh, as a simple explanation of what's happening here. First, uh, through thanks to the uh, powerful laser field, the strong electric field, uh, optical ionization uh, of the uh, atom happens and the electron uh, can uh, travel through uh, the distorted potential barrier uh, of the atom and can be removed uh, from the uh, atomic core. Uh, and after that, uh, as time passes, uh, the electric field changes its sign and the electron can freely propagate in the electric field of the laser field. And that the elect as the electron field changes its sign, it can return to the uh, ion ionic core uh, that was left there through to, uh, th uh, thanks to the ionization. And when it returns as a third step, uh, the electron can be captured by this parent ion and the high energy photon is emitted. And thanks to the acceleration of the laser field, of course, uh, this photon will be more powerful than the photon uh, that is generating this process. Uh, so the IR uh, photon will be converted to an extreme ultraviolet and XUV photon. If we look at it, this process from a different viewpoint, uh, we can also uh, consider it as uh, that the atomic response is a fast dipole oscillation uh, as it uh, as time passes, and this dipole response, if we consider how it looks like uh, after a Fourier transform, so how it looks like spectrally, then we will see uh, that it consists of a spectrum uh, that uh, has peaks at the odd order odd orders of the fundamental field, which is uh, drawn here by red color, and the harmonic field is described uh, by the uh, odd order harmonics of the fundamental field. Uh, the three-step model can simply describe which is the highest photon energy uh, that is uh, generated. Uh, and also considering uh, that this process of the three-step model is repeated uh, twice every cycle of the optical field, uh, it gives a simple explanation uh, why there is a two omega one spacing uh, between uh, the high harmonic peaks. So this is the single atom picture of high harmonic generation. But as I described uh, in the beginning, uh, we have not only one atom in this uh, volume where the interaction happens, uh, but a lot, of, uh, a lot of atoms. So we have to consider that the interaction happens with multiple uh, targets. And uh, this will define what we will observe experimentally or observe theoretically if we do uh, numerical simulations. Uh, we have to consider how uh, the different atoms uh, react uh, to the strong uh, laser field. And for this, I put here this picture where the uh, red color field is the generating laser field and the little blue dots are the different atoms positioned in the medium at different spots. And uh, just to immediately jump to the end, to the conclusion of uh, phase matching, phase matching means, uh, or it can be described by a mathematical expression, which we call uh, delta K. If it's zero, it means 
that all the uh, XUV that is generated from these atoms at the end of the medium, uh, they are having uh, the same phase. So we see that uh, along this line that I'm showing with the cursor, we have uh, with all atom sources, uh, we have all the XUVs peaked here. If there is a phase mismatch or delta K is not equal to zero, it means uh, that these atoms will not uh, emit uh, in phase or actually after propagation through the medium, uh, the different uh, XUV fields will, be not be, will not be in phase and there will be a destructive interference. So if delta K phase mismatch is zero, then we have a constructive interference at the end of the medium. And it will mean that due, thanks to the constructive interference, we get a high flux uh, of XM ultraviolet field uh, at the end of the medium. If we have delta K not equal to zero, then there will be some destructive interference to a certain extent, and we will have lower flux. And to put this delta K uh, into concept, uh, usually uh, people uh, take a simple example, which is second harmonic generation. Uh, and this I will go through quickly using a simple uh, model, which I really like because it catches the most important parts of phase matching and it can be easily generalized to high harmonic generation. So not just the second harmonic, but the odd order harmonics that we observe when we generate uh, high order harmonics uh, in gases. So let's consider the fundamental laser field, uh, which propagates according to this expression. We see this is the phase uh, spatial phase change along the propagation axis, which is Z here. And uh, while uh, the fundamental field propagates from Z equal to zero to Z, it will acquire this phase uh, where K1 is the wave vector of the fundamental field, while E0 just describes uh, the amplitude of the field at Z equal to, uh, Z equal to zero. This field at this certain Z position uh, along propagation will generate polarization. There will be a dipole response as I described in the previous slide will generate second harmonic polarization, which is well known from uh, nonlinear optics that it can be taken uh, as this form. So there is a susceptibility and uh, the second harmonic field uh, will be proportional uh, to the square of the fundamental field. And if I take uh, this uh, expression that I've written here uh, and I put it into this expression, I see that uh, this is the form of the second harmonic polarization that I will get. Okay, we have the response of the, uh, of the medium uh, then in which the laser is propagating. Then let's see what is the second harmonic field that is induced uh, during second harmonic generation. Uh, it, can be, it can be also uh, known from, from non basic nonlinear optics uh, studies uh, that the second harmonic field strength will be proportional to the second uh, harmonic polarization. So having this expression and putting this uh, formula that I have here into this expression, I will get uh, the following uh, second harmonic field electric strength uh, as a function of propagation distance in the medium. Uh, as everyone can see, uh, the wave vector is twice, uh, twice uh, the wave vector of the fundamental field. And if I want to know uh, what, how this second harmonic field is propagated uh, to the end of the medium, which I uh, uh, name as L med or the medium length, uh, if I calculate it, then I have to take uh, the field that is generated at Z position. And there is the propagation from the, between the medium end and the Z position. I take into account uh, that the wave vector of the second harmonic field is uh, something different. It's not, it's the K2, so it's twice uh, the uh, fundamental field wave vector normally. And if I again uh, put this expression into this one, I will see that uh, the second harmonic field that I will absorb at the end of the medium, uh, if I consider only this field uh, and only in Z position, there is a generation of second harmonic. Uh, then I get this expression in which 
uh, I see appearing uh, the wave vector different, difference uh, of two times the fundamental field minus uh, the uh, this uh, wave vector of the second harmonic field, which we call delta k, the phase mismatch. So in the end, what I'm trying to get to is that, of course, this process, second harmonic generation, happens everywhere in the macroscopic medium. So to really see what we absorb in the end, we have to take uh, the superposition uh, of all the fields that are generated in the medium. This we can do mathematically uh, by doing an integration from the beginning of the medium, z equal to zero, to the end of the medium, z equal to the medium length. And we have to integrate this expression. And this can be done analytically uh, simply by uh, putting the expression that we got earlier into this integral. And we can get that the amplitude of the total field that we observe at the end of the medium looks like the following, depending on two things, the medium length, so how long medium we have in which this whole thing is propagating, and what is the phase uh, mismatch uh, in this case, which is described here. So the strength of the uh, radiation, second harmonic radiation in this uh, example, uh, will depend on these two things, the medium length and the phase mismatch. And the phase mismatch, what is important, it describes uh, the wave vector difference between the propagated harmonic field and the induced polarization. This will define phase matching uh, in a macroscopic medium. So let's see then what will be the actual flux uh, of the harmonic field uh, that we are generating. We have to take the amplitude square of the previous expression that I showed uh, on the previous slide. So there will be a square. I will square both the medium length and the uh, and the sink function, which is a sinus x over x type of expression, it's just a short uh, form for that. I think it is also uh, quite uh, well known. Uh, and what is an important uh, observation here is that if we have perfect phase matching, which is delta k equal to zero, uh, then this sink function will give one. And we see that upon perfect phase matching, uh, the strength, the flux of the harmonic radiation uh, will increase quadrati quadratically with the medium length. If we don't have perfect phase matching, then delta k not equals to zero. And for these uh, situations, it is better to uh, introduce a new uh, quantifier for phase mismatch, which we call coherence length, uh, which is simply pi over delta k. Uh, and it is gives a more uh, picturesque or it's easier to uh, imagine this way what uh, this means. So if, if we have delta k not equal to zero, then uh, it means that the coherence length is something different from infinity. And this coherence length will define uh, the propagation distance until which the superposition uh, is constructive. And this is uh, in this example uh, given by this position uh, where I draw the vertical dashed line. So up to this point, up to the coherence length, uh, the harmonics that are, the second harmonic that is, that is generated in the medium will be constructively interfering. The field uh, will be building up, the flux will be increasing, but after that uh, it will start decreasing because there will be a destructive interference. The point here is, and why I introduced this uh, mathematical form, uh, is that this concept of phase mismatch and coherence length can be generalized in a very similar manner uh, to any harmonic order Q. And that is what people, uh, that is how people treat phase matching for high harmonic generation uh, as well uh, around the world. It's quite general. Uh, and phase mismatch, of course, depends on a lot of spatial temporal uh, phase properties or uh, it depends on the spatial temporal phase properties, which depends on a lot of different parameters of the generating laser field and the medium that you uh, are generating in. Uh, often people for high harmonic generation uh, use this expression uh, for phase mismatch for different terms, which are related to different uh, medium or generation field concepts or uh, uh, parameters. 
for example, this delta Kn is just simply the neutral dispersion. Uh, so the dispersion of the medium that the field is propagating in. Uh, delta Kp is the plasma dispersion. When we uh, ionize these uh, atoms, there will be three electrons uh, in the medium, which contributes to the uh, refractive index of the medium. And of course, there are other uh, terms, which I'm not going to describe uh, here, uh, which are related to the laser field or uh, to the phase uh, of the, uh, that is acquired during the process of high harmonic, the single atom uh, uh, process of uh, high harmonic generation. Okay, so we have phase matching uh, as something that uh, will define uh, how uh, efficient our harmonic generation is uh, in a gas medium. There is one thing in addition that we have to take into account uh, apart from the different propagation velocities or K vectors uh, of the generated fields and the generating field uh, is that the radiation uh, is also absorbed in the medium. Uh, for example, for the Q's harmonic field, uh, in addition to the phase factor that I take into, took into account in the previous expression, there is an amplitude factor. Uh, this is related uh, this absorption is related to the imaginary part of the refractive index or imaginary part of the wave vector. And this will cause uh, a decrease in the amplitude uh, of the field while it propagates through the medium along uh, axis Z. Similarly uh, to how uh, for phase mismatch, there can be a coherence length introduced. There can be an absorption length introduced uh, for the absorption. And uh, it is defined as the following. Uh, so here I had kappa uh, as an expression uh, here for defining absorption. And one over two kappa is the usual definition of absorption length. Uh, and if one considers, uh, this means that the absorption length is the propagation distance after which the intensity uh, of the field will be dec decreased to one over E times its original uh, value. Uh, just as a few examples, as, uh, I put here uh, two plots where the absorption length uh, is plotted in argon medium, which is an usual uh, target medium for high harmonic generation at 40 electron volts, which is uh, quite common to be generated uh, in laboratories with uh, high harmonic sources. And you can see uh, that in the pressure range uh, where uh, people usually have their gas targets, the pressure range in uh, which they have in their gas targets, uh, the absorption length is pretty short, only a few uh, millimeters. Uh, also, uh, this is true for, for other uh, photon energies as well, which are common phi harmonic generation. So the point is that absorption of extreme ultraviolet radiation that we are generating with high harmonic generation it is very important that it is heavily absorbed in air and the generation medium. So one should really consider absorption when uh, uh, designing a target uh, for high harmonic generation. And of course, this is the simple uh, explanation why high harmonic generation beamlines are beamlines that are fully under vacuum. So we need uh, vacuum chambers to, uh, to have uh, an efficient HAG source and actually to be able to do anything with the extreme ultraviolet radiation that we are generating. One other thing that I want to highlight uh, that, uh, of course, uh, if you see lower pressure will mean a longer absorption length. So if we have a lower pressure, there are less atoms. So there are less atoms which will absorb the, uh, media, uh, the radiation that is generated. So uh, in case of lower pressure target media, you, one can use uh, a longer medium. Uh, and I'm highlighting this because uh, this will be important uh, in an aspect that I will uh, give uh, a bit later. So uh, I've overviewed that there are two important things when someone wants to get an efficient high flux, high harmony source. Uh, one is phase mismatch and the other is absorption. Uh, and actually, uh, a few decades ago, two decades ago, uh, approximately, uh, Eric Constant and co-workers uh, developed a very nice one-dimensional model uh, for high harmonic generation in absorbing gases, which allowed them to, to uh, 
formulate simple laws that can help beamline designers, high harmony generation beamline designers to design their targets uh, for the generation. And for this, they used uh, some simplifications and some assumptions uh, which were necessary to formulate this uh, simple expression, these general uh, guidance. Uh, and they assume that in the generation medium uh, is a volume uh, where in which the single atom response is constant, the atom density is also constant, and there is no change in the coherence length or the absorption length uh, in the whole volume. And this means that uh, similarly how I described uh, in the slide about phase matching, if someone wants to uh, calculate uh, the uh, superposition of the generated harmonic field, then one has to evaluate uh, an integral, uh, which in case in this case is, a, is of the following form. It is, uh, it is not uh, a surprise that it's very similar to the first slide. The only thing is that now both, uh, both terms uh, in the exponential are present, both uh, the phase mismatch and absorption. And this can be evaluated analytically and one can get this, the following expression. And this expression uh, contains exactly the length parameters that I was describing in the previous slide, the medium length, the absorption length, and the coherence length. That is all that is present. Uh, and actually, uh, the expression give, uh, given by uh, these authors, it also contained uh, the pressure uh, as a as a factor that you have to multiply this with to get uh, the flux of the harmonics. But actually, this can be converted uh, in a simple way uh, to absorption length because there is a relation between the uh, atomic density and the absorption length, which is quite simple. The sigma here that uh, you see is the photoionization cross section, which depends only on the type of the medium that you use. And the main point uh, of this uh, expression and that it's an analytical and there are only three variables uh, that it depends on is that you can use one of the variables uh, absorption length as a normalization factor and you can get an expression that is basically dimensionless so can be generally used uh, to see how one can optimize a high harmonic source uh, and it can be plotted on a single plot because there is only there are only two variables uh, so what you can see here uh, is the output photon flux uh, of a harmonic, uh, basically the result of this expression as a function of medium length, which is uh, normalized to uh, absorption length. Uh, and the different curves represent different relations, ratios between the coherence length and absorption length. And if one uh, looks at this, for example, one can see that in case there is no absorption and there is perfect phase matching, uh, then one can get the same quadratic uh, dependence as, uh, as I described uh, before for, with the second harmonic generation. And the key factor uh, to have efficient flux, efficient harmonic generation and high flux is to have a much higher coherence length than the absorption length. And after certain propagation, absorption will define uh, what flux you can get. There's an absorption limit uh, that you can reach. And for this, you need to have a certain length of medium. And if we consider uh, these two parameters, uh, the medium length uh, normalized to absorption length and the relation of coherence length and absorption length, there, are, there is a simple guide to reach at least 50% of the accession limited flux, which tells that the coherence length have to be two pi times the absorption length and the medium has to be long enough uh, that uh, reabsorption uh, will not define, uh, will define basically uh, the flux that you reach. Uh, so there is a minimum medium length that is needed to reach this absorption in limited flux. And here uh, I highlight again uh, that lower pressure mean a longer absorption length. So it means that actually if one uses a lower pressure medium uh, for high harmonic generation, it will actually need a longer medium uh, to have an efficient source. So on the previous slide, I mentioned that there is, thanks to the longer absorption length, uh, the radiation is not so strongly reabsorbed. So one can use a higher medium, but actually according to this simple law, uh, you need a long medium length uh, if you have uh, a low pressure medium. 
And based on this uh, simple uh, expression, uh, colleagues from, from Lund University uh, recently looked into uh, the possibility uh, or looked into the uh, ideas of how to have an efficient uh, high harmonic gas, a gas uh, medium. They did some uh, simulations uh, for high harmonic generation and they uh, were studying uh, how efficient high harmonic generation is uh, as a function of the medium length that you have and the pressure that you have in your medium. And they got the following curves. Uh, the different plots are for different peak intensities uh, of the laser field. And what is interesting uh, that they got uh, a hyperbola along which uh, they saw efficient generation of harmonics on this map of uh, medium length uh, and medium pressure. And actually this hyperbola, they could easily explain using analytical expressions if they, so, uh, if, if they assume a social limited high harmonic generation, uh, so they were using the curve of uh, constant and co-workers uh, to decide with what is the medium length necessary, they, can, they had an expression, they could define an expression, uh, which is a hyperbola uh, drawn here by these dashed white lines, which will define where you can have efficient high harmonics high harmonic generation, efficiently generated high harmonics. And basically there are, the main conclusion uh, of, this, of these plots was that uh, there are two regions that can be identified for efficient high harmonic generation. One option is that one uses a low pressure long medium, which corresponds to this region that I uh, highlighted by the red rectangles. Uh, in this case, a lower ionization level is necessary. Uh, uh, it is visible also when one compares the four different uh, figures, uh, because here at lower uh, intensities, which mean lower ionization, the efficiency seems a bit uh, higher along uh, these lines. Uh, and, of, and the other uh, conclusion uh, for this uh, region is that uh, it is not so sensitive, efficient generation is not so sensitive to the exact length of the medium. Uh, but it is very sensitive to the pressure that one has. And there is another region uh, which is uh, highlighted by the blue rectangles is when you use a short medium uh, with a high pressure. And for this, a higher ionization is necessary. This will give you uh, phase matching. As you can see, uh, when looking at the highlight red, uh, blue rectangle highlighted regions, when you go to higher intensities, so what means higher ionization level, you will get more efficient HAG. And here, an important conclusion was that if you use uh, a high pressure short medium, uh, the exact pressure of the medium is not so important, but you should have the proper length uh, for this medium. And why I highlighted uh, this example is because this is something uh, that uh, we have been using at uh, Eli Alps are actually uh, people, uh, different research groups who designed uh, our high harmonic generation beam lines uh, were actually focusing on these different, uh, these two different regions for efficient high harmonic generations, generation. We have two beam lines. One of them is the Silas compact beam line, uh, which uh, we call compact uh, because it's only a few tens of meters uh, length, in length, a uh, few meters in length, sorry. And we have the Silos long beam line, uh, which is pretty long. It spans basically uh, all the whole building that we have at Eli, which is 80 meters long. So these two beam lines actually were, are using these two different regions of efficient high harmonic generation. Uh, the Silos compact beam line designed by uh, Greek colleagues uh, from Forth in Crete. It uses a shorter focusing, so higher intensities of the laser field, higher ionization levels, combined with high pressure gas targets, which are short, only a few millimeters long. And this way, they reach efficient uh, high harmonic generation, and they use it for uh, nonlinear XUV, uh, or this beamline is designed for nonlinear XUV studies. On the other hand, the Silos long beamline uses the other concept. Uh, they use longer focusing. Uh, focusing here means 55 meter focal length. Uh, as I said, it spans the whole building. 
And it is combined with a low pressure gas cell, which is long. It is also very extreme compared to usual uh, small lab scale beam lines. It can, the cell is almost, it can be six meters long, which has a low density target uh, inside. I mean, there is no banana for scale, but believe me that this is something very long here, spanning the whole laboratory. And this is just the gas cell system that we are using as a target. So these two beam lines use these two different regions. And actually recently with the second beam line, the long beam line, uh, there was, were some user experiments exactly testing uh, the ideas or this concept of this hyperbola for, of, uh, on the map of uh, medium length and uh, medium pressure, uh, uh, really testing uh, these conditions if they are really uh, according to these expectations. Uh, using the exact same setup apart from the medium pressure and medium length. Okay, so, so far what I have described uh, were all based on the simplest uh, idea that we have a pressure medium, uh, we have a gas medium that has a constant pressure and everything is constant. All the parameters that uh, the high harmonic flux depend, depend on, it is all uh, constant. But what if we consider a realistic pressure profile of for uh, a gas target in HAG. Uh, what is the real pressure profile actually? Uh, is it realistic to have uh, assume uh, a constant pressure profile for uh, gas targets uh, in high harmonic generation? And realistically, for example, if someone uses a, a gas jet as a gas target, it is far from constant as you can see in this uh, color map. Uh, so what can we do to take into account if there, if it has a relevant effect, uh, if there are pressure gradients uh, in the medium and it is not a constant pressure medium with the same atomic density everywhere in the volume, then in which we generate uh, the high order harmonics. And the simplest uh, extension uh, of the original model of uh, constant, Eric Constant and coworkers, if we assume that instead of a constant phase mismatch and constant absorption, uh, we uh, extend this uh, model to a linear, like uh, taking another term in the Taylor expansion of the phase mismatch. So taking also a linear term as a function of propagation distance for both the phase mismatch and absorption. Of course, it is uh, mathematically possible, and this is the easiest way to extend it, but uh, before going into this direction, one can ask the question if it is uh, realistic, if it is something physically meaningful to assume that along the propagation distance, we have a linear variation of these variables, phase mismatch and absorption. And actually, uh, if one goes into the details, uh, it, can found, it can be found that it is realistic for absorption it is quite logical uh, because uh, there is a simple, uh, relation, linear relation between uh, the atomic density or gas pressure uh, and uh, absorption. So they scale linearly with, with each other. What is more of a question is phase mismatch, uh, but actually it can be shown uh, that delta K for the different terms that are important in high harmonic generation and which I mentioned uh, previously in relation to the uh, description of phase mismatch, the important terms are either uh, linearly dependent on the pressure or atomic density. This is true for neutral dispersion and plasma dispersion, or they are actually constant and not really varying with propagation distance under usual high harmonic generation conditions. So phase mismatch can be also written in the form, uh, which is basically a constant term plus a term that depends uh, linearly on the propagation distance. So it is physically meaningful under usual conditions of HAG in gases to assume uh, that if we evaluate this uh, integral, then we will get something meaningful that is representative also for the actual situation that happens uh, in the laboratory. So this is something physically meaningful to it is, it is worth evaluating this integral. And this is uh, what uh, we have done. And we were interested in what happens if we have uh, a generation medium uh, which starts with a pressure gradient. And uh, we evaluated the integral. It turned out that it is analytically possible to integrate it. And similar expression can be found as for as what uh, constant and coworkers found. Uh, and we 
got some extra parameters, of course, which I don't want to go too much into details what uh, they mean. The extra parameters are the peak pressure, uh, the pressure gradient steepness, and uh, R is something that uh, also appears in the model of constant uh, at all, which is the relation of coherence length and absorption length. And we got these uh, different plots, uh, which are representing in these two uh, cases, uh, High, ionize, high ionization level situation and low ionization level situation. And what you can see here is that on the horizontal axis, that is the gradient steepness uh, with, with which the medium begins, as you can see in this little inset, that uh, the uh, higher value of this theta variable means a steeper gradient in the medium beginning. And as a function of this steepness, you can see uh, the uh, harmonic flux as a function of different uh, variables. And uh, not going into the details since these are many variables and many complex variations of how things uh, can change. Uh, I'm just gonna uh, summarize the main conclusions that we got from these uh, simple, uh, relatively simple analytical expressions. What we can see from this first uh, and also the second uh, plot is that there is an optimum pressure gradient for a certain peak pressure, as you can see here, uh, these peaks for the different curves. And this uh, gradient that is optimum for generation, it is increasing uh, with peak pressure. So you have, uh, if you have a higher pressure medium, which reaches a certain higher pressure after the gradient, you need to have a steeper gradient uh, to make an efficient harmonic source. And uh, in the case of uh, high ionization levels, so looking at the plot on the left, uh, a higher pressure and a higher gradient is in general necessary for uh, a high flux. And this is very much fitting to the observations of the original model of constant et al. and the beam lines uh, that I was describing. And for the case of lower ionization level, uh, what you can see is that uh, for lo lower ionization levels, uh, you can have uh, a lower pressure uh, medium with a less steep or more gradual gradient, which can serve as a good alternative uh, for a medium that has a higher pressure and higher steepness. So actually along these uh, pressures or gradients, lower pressure medium, uh, with lower gradient uh, is better at lower ionization levels. So it, this is also fitting uh, to the uh, models of uh, constant and co-workers and what the Lund group uh, has uh, concluded. Uh, I highlight here with this red dot, this optimum situation because I will be referring to it uh, in the next slide. The other question that we asked, uh, because this is something that was uh, that people are curious about, as as far as I see, uh, is that how a pressure gradient will at the end of the medium will affect high harmonic flux. And here, uh, what we got again, I'm the the variables are very similar. Uh, on the horizontal axis, you see the steepness of the pressure gradient and the abdomen medium. In this case, the only difference is that. On the left, we will get the steeper medium uh, as, as uh, these uh, arrows are showing. Uh, the R uh, variable, again, define relation of coherence length and absorption length. The point is uh, what I want to make here that we got in general that having a steep pressure gradient at the end of the medium uh, where the driving laser beam exits, exits uh, this uh, medium, it is important for having a high flux. As you can see, if you have a steep gradient, you can have almost the absorption limit. But as you go to a more gradual decrease uh, in pressure, or you have a medium uh, that has a gradual decrease of pressure at the end of the medium, this will automatically give you a loss of high harmonic uh, flux. And as a general law, uh, thanks to the dimensionless uh, form of the expression and the analytical form of the expression that we could acquire, uh, it can be said generally that to keep the 80% of the flux that you achieve in the medium and not to not lose it during propagation through the end of the medium grade, uh, of this pressure gradient, in this pressure gradient, uh, this, the medium should end in one fifth uh, of the absorption length. 
And as an example, because uh, always just showing these curves and uh, talking about dimensionless variables, uh, experimentalists uh, uh, like partially myself don't really like uh, this because then, okay, then what if I have some certain parameters for Harman generation? How should I design my medium? I need some length uh, that is defined in some uh, SI units. Uh, so I put as an example, uh, one can see the details uh, in our uh, work in, in general of physics B, how this calculation can be done. As an example, uh, for a beam line uh, at uh, Eli Alps, or one of our beam lines at, uh, at Eli Alps, if you generate high harmonics in argon uh, at peak intensities that produce you 2% of ionization uh, level in the medium, then the 29th harmonic of the fundamental laser field uh, with the laser beam that is focused to 10 centimeter railing length, uh, the peak pressure that is optimal for high ionic generation, it, here I mean by optimum pressure, uh, the red dot uh, th on the previous slide, on the first uh, plot of the previous slide, will give you around 150 millivars of peak pressure with an entrance gradient of five millimeters. So uh, the, the medium should really start abrupt, like, abruptly or not very abruptly, but with a steep gradient and really had to end in an abrupt end. It has to have an abrupt end. So uh, this is something uh, that is technically uh, hard to be done. Uh, so we have to make real uh, considerations how to do it, or we have to make real uh, important technical considerations we had to take uh, at uh, Eli Alps. And that is what I'm uh, going to show in the next slide. Uh, that uh, we have an example gas cell system, which is kind of fulfilling these requirements that we got uh, for the uh, medium based on these simple models uh, for efficient high harmonic generation. Uh, we designed uh, a gas uh, cell in which, uh, as you can see in, the, uh, in this plot, uh, the pressure uh, in the interaction volume highlighted by the purple uh, background. Uh, the pressure is quite uh, constant and it has an abrupt starting uh, and ending as required by uh, our uh, simple models. Uh, the other uh, plots are not so important now uh, in this respect. I highlighted it because uh, we were uh, testing if, uh, if this uh, gas cell uh, affects uh, the generation and reabsorption also outside uh, the interaction volume, which is the volume of the uh, gas cell. Uh, and if there are uh, fluctuations in the pressure, for example, which would make uh, our high harmonic source also fluctuating in intensity. The point is uh, that uh, this uh, pressure dub that we got uh, with the simulations uh, that were studying uh, the uh, pressure distribution in the gas cell, uh, we found uh, that uh, we will reach approximately uh, a drop to 60% uh, of the high harmonic flux that we generate in the uh, medium. Uh, and that uh, another set of experiments where we were testing uh, how the length of the medium, uh, the generation gas target volume uh, affects the high harmonic flux, we got uh, that the medium that we were testing were fulfilling the requirement that we got from the original uh, model of uh, high harmonic generation, uh, uh, this one dimensional model that I've been referring to. Uh, and we were studying also uh, how uh, the laser intensity variations, I mean, if we vary uh, the pulse energy that we are generating with and the pressure uh, affects high harmonic generation, and we got a nice matching. Uh, with uh, what the model of the Lund group uh, gave. Uh, and this I used to switch to uh, the topic uh, of, uh, of the technical uh, aspects that one should consider when designing uh, a beamline for, for uh, driven by uh, a high uh, average uh, power uh, laser. So this is the gas cell system uh, that we have uh, at Eli Alps that I was referring to in the previous slide. The laser beam propagates through here and we have the interaction volume inside. These little arrows describe how the, uh, describes how the uh, gas atoms are flowing uh, around uh, inside. And we have a very powerful laser system called the HR1 laser of the uh, of Eli Alps. 
uh, which has the main point here is that it, it has 100 watt average power. Uh, it is uh, designed and uh, built by Active Fiber Systems. Uh, and we realized that this 100 watt average power, if it hits uh, our laser gas target, our gas target, that it can really heat it up. So we have to consider it. And we designed uh, a gas target that can be cooled uh, by uh, cooling water. Uh, and this way we don't melt uh, our uh, target because uh, actually when the laser beam propagates through the gas medium, it can also hit uh, the edge uh, of the gas cell. And if this whole thing is melted, then we don't have the volume for high harmony generation. Uh, so we had this nice uh, design, uh, which is upscalable to even higher average powers, which is necessary because we will have the HR2 laser pretty soon, which will be running at 500 watt uh, average power. Another thing that uh, we had to consider, or actually the designers of our beamline had to consider, uh, the designers of the beamline that are driven by the HR1 laser, uh, they had to consider another respect because of the high average power. Uh, to discuss, describe this uh, aspect, uh, I show you a typical at the second beam line. Uh, it should be quite, quite uh, similar to, to uh, what everyone uh, is uh, seeing in, in his or her laboratory. Uh, we have a beam line usually used for pump probe at the second pump probe. There's a generation arm where we generate the high harmonics and generate an XUV beam. And we have a probe beam that can be delayed so we can do XUV IR pump probe measurements after recombination and focusing. We can have a target into which we shoot uh, with these two beams. Typically, laser beams that are used are around one watt average power uh, in these beam lines. What is usually done uh, is to have a beam path where we only have the XUV is that we put a thin aluminum foil, which is transparent for the XUV, but it uh, does not allow through the IR beam. But the point is that to have a reasonable transparency also for the uh, XUV, this have to be very thin, 100 nanometer thickness or few hundred nanometer thickness. And the question is if we could use the same concept with a high average power laser, and that's the question that was asked by the developers when they designed it uh, by the group of Fanvoni Zoli in Milano. And the answer was no, uh, because the hybrid power was, uh, would destroy uh, this thin metallic filter. So they decided to uh, go to uh, a concept that was uh, found out pretty long ago uh, in 1994, that uh, to avoid uh, co-propagation after generation of the I and X UV beams uh, to use an annular laser beam because then after generation in the central part, the lower divergence X UV beam could go pass through a little hole and there can be an aperture that is blocking the IR beam. This has been used in several uh, nice uh, experiments, uh, early experiments of high harmonic uh, generation and that the cycle pulse production. But the thing is uh, that it's a good idea uh, but does this ray tracing model really uh, explain what is happening here or, or is it properly explaining? Because this is just a simple ge geometrical sketch of how these beams are propagating. And actually what turned down during the implementation of one of our beam lines uh, is that uh, one has to be really careful uh, when designing uh, this beam line with this annular beam concept. Here uh, we use a mirror uh, that has a hole in the middle that reflects the annular beam for high harmonic generation as I described. And we have a dump mirror which dumps out the laser beam that is also in principle annular after generation. Uh, and actually it turned out uh, that uh, it is not so random where you can put your dumping mirror uh, to get rid of the uh, IR beam, but you really have to be careful where you put it because you can have very intense peaks in the middle of the propagation, co-propagating uh, co IR beam with the XUV. And it turned out uh, that to make sure that there is no problem with the IR beam and we don't destroy with this little peak in the middle, we don't destroy our filter that we might put here or we uh, affect the experiment that we are doing with this uh, uh, intense peak in the middle, one has to place uh, the Holy dump meter at the specific position and the specific position is the imaging plane uh, of the imaging optic, which is our focusing uh, mirror 
in which we use to focus the laser beam into the gas cell when our object for this imaging is the uh, holy splitting mirror, or the splitting mirror which generates the annular beam. Another consideration that uh, came up during uh, conferences from, from the audience uh, when we were presenting uh, these beam lines is that, uh, of course, that's good that you put uh, in the image plane your uh, dumping aperture, uh, but when the laser beam propagates through uh, this nonlinear medium, uh, phase changes will happen and this whole imaging will be distorted. And actually, this is something that we got uh, uh, with uh, simulations uh, of high harmonic generation. There is a slight change when there is a medium in the volume, in the focal point, uh, but actually it turned out that it does not have a relevant effect. But what was more surprising for us is that there is an effect of similar importance is that we have this gas cell, which has a certain aperture, which acts as a spatial filter, and this will also distort uh, the imaging. So instead of an ideal uh, annular beam, we will have a beam profile that is similar to this, a smooth beam profile, because in the focus, we put our gas target with some certain aperture, it will distort uh, the imaging uh, properties. And this is something uh, we experienced uh, in the laboratory. Uh, this uh, series of uh, images shows uh, that similarly as we expect uh, from uh, the uh, simulations, when we have the spatial filtering, uh, we have a more blurred beam profile of this uh, annular beam. Uh, so after considering these aspects, uh, we were able to build and run a high harmonic generation beamline, which is quite uh, efficient and uh, it is open for uh, users to do experiments with it. Uh, it was published recently in Ultrafast Science. We also got uh, on the cover with it. I hope uh, uh, that uh, a lot of users will come. We already have one user experiment. Uh, we will have one user experiment in the uh, coming week uh, for one of these uh, beamlines. And, uh, as a next step, what we are uh, working on, for example, is to generate isolated at the second pulses. And for this, this we have uh, good examples from around the world. Uh, for example, in the Max Born Institute in Berlin, uh, they have uh, generated pretty powerful uh, XUV uh, single at the second pulses uh, with 100 kilohertz repetition rate or in Japan, uh, another group of uh, researchers at 10 Hertz, which have, of course, means that you can have more efficient, more powerful uh, harmonic generation. Of course, these uh, beam lines were driven by low average power laser beams. So again, one has to consider what will happen if one uses uh, a high power uh, laser beam for generation. And with this, I reached my last slide, which I just used for uh, advertisement. Uh, that uh, we have a lot of uh, lasers, high harmonic beam lines, and other ultrafast sources of terahertz radiation, extreme ultraviolet radiation, or we are going to soon have electron acceleration beam lines. We are at Eli Alps, we are a user facility, we have open user calls. So if you have some good idea uh, of uh, an interesting uh, experiment, then apply for our proposals. Uh, we have a lot of uh, equipment uh, to work with. And uh, with this, uh, I would like to thank you for your uh, attention. And I'm looking forward to questions. And sorry for being a bit longer than, than, <laughs> than what would be ideal. No worries. Uh, thank you for giving your talk. And uh, it was very informative. I think we all learned a lot about propagation and that things have evolved a lot and they are much more complex than you think. Are there questions, comments? Uh, if anybody would like to ask something, do feel free to raise your hand. I mean, it's, it's quite impressive what you are achieving. What, in your opinion, would be the next step? We have a lot of plans. <laughs> uh, so uh, next step, as I said, uh, one of the next steps is to, so far we were generating at the second pulse trains. Uh, so we were using long driving laser pulses. Uh, so we have uh, at the second pulses at each uh, laser shot at every uh, uh, half period of the generating laser feed, we would like to have isolated at the second pulses, which allows for, for measurement of at the second dynamics uh, driven by a single pump 
and probe uh, driven by a single pump pulse and then uh, checked by or probed by a single probe pulse. Uh, also, our beamlines currently, uh, this is an aspect I, I, I haven't highlighted, uh, but uh, only can generate uh, extreme ultraviolet at the second pulses with linear polarization. But there are a lot of things like uh, curality and so on uh, that uh, are uh, physical parameters of, of targets of, uh, of a solid state, for example that could be studied with uh, uh, different polarization states than linear, like circular polarization or elliptical polarization, but uh, generating uh, extreme ultraviolet radiation through high ionic generation uh, that is different from linear polarization, it's uh, pretty hard because high ionic generation is inefficient uh, when you have, for example, uh, a circularly polarized generating laser field, it will be low efficiency uh, source for XUV. So this is something we are also uh, working on. And of course we have beam lines and there are always a lot of things to do. Uh, so at the second sciences is uh, like a continuous development. So if you find a new idea or an experiment you would like to do, then you realize that, okay, then I have to change quite a few things uh, in the laboratory to be able to do that. And it's actually a pretty hard part of our tasks here at Eli Alps uh, that uh, we are a user facility so people can come with their ideas. Uh, and the first question is if that can be done. I mean, okay, there is one thing that in principle it can be done because we have the XUV uh, at the second sources for that. But okay, there are a lot of technical aspects one have to consider to be able to really do that experiment. So there are, there are always technical upgrades and we are, so our main goal is to make these uh, uh, at the second beam lines usable for more and more experiments, different types of experiments. And it is always, it's not just, it's R&D, but at the same time as we can often uh, encounter physical problems or, or new physics or things like that. Okay. We have a question from Penye. Hi, uh, hi uh, Balax. <laughs> hi, Penye. <Pen. laughs> again, sorry. Uh, about the user experiment, what end stations are ready and can be provided to the users together with these attosecond pulses in Eli Alps? Mm -hmm. The user experiment that we are going to have is using our uh, basic equipment, uh, one of our beamlines driven by a high rep rate laser system, this 100 kilohertz that I've been talking about that it's using the annular laser beam, but it uses simply a time of flight electron spectrometer and they are doing an XUV IR pump probe measurement. Uh, but uh, we have a lot of end stations uh, attached to these uh, beam lines. So different type of if equipment that you can use to detect uh, different type of uh, physical entities. I mean, not just light and photons, but you can detect ions and uh, electrons and so on. And we have, for example, uh, a reaction microscope or uh, cold trims, sometimes called cold trims, uh, which can be used in combination with one of our beam lines. Uh, there is a nano SKN station, uh, which is uh, an RPS and beam system. So it's an angled result photoelectron spectroscopy system uh, can, that can be used on solid state targets. Uh, and also uh, it is a photo emission electron microscope. That's what uh, beam stands for. Uh, and uh, so you can detect electrons uh, in these systems that are removed during photoionization uh, of the different systems of the targets that you are using. Uh, we are prepared for both solid state targets and uh, also gas based uh, targets. So you can uh, study photoionization, photofragmentation uh, with our sources uh, of different uh, phase in the different phases of matter. And there are a lot of other things. I mean, we have the laser sources, which are cutting edge. We, uh, we have uh, terahertz uh, sources, which are based on also uh, uh, generation from, from on different, based on different processes uh, using these high power lasers. Uh, we have uh, gas phase reaction control system. We have transient absorption setups uh, that are, uh, that can be used either in the IR, in the visible, or in the terahertz regime, uh, and so on. So basically, uh, we have a lot of equipment that are generally used uh, 
uh, in the field of uh, AMO physics and also solid state physics. And we welcome uh, users to, to use them and because that's what we are here for. Okay, so yeah, thank you. Thank you, Balaj. So I, I think uh, uh, I think I find that so many people in Europe, so they, they are very interested to use those end stations to do uh, to use this to do this XUV IR pump probe in condensed matter and uh, uh, different phases. So uh, I think uh, yeah, it will be useful for many people. Yeah, I'm. I'm... Happy to hear that, uh, yeah. that people are interested. Uh, there will be soon, within a few months, we will be uh, starting to prepare uh, an experiment uh, that is going to use uh, the solid state uh, physics, uh, fo focusing on solid state physics using the uh, nano -esca. Actually, there was some benchmarking experiments planned uh, for this device, uh, which we bought from uh, from a company work de developing such uh, systems. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, uh, very good. Are there further questions? I mean, uh, you mentioned solids and already for gases, there's quite a lot of uh, subtleties that you need to take into consideration in the propagation. Yeah. Uh, how about solids? Because there, going to have like a periodic structure and all sorts of things. Yeah, it's still a really, really interesting topic. We are not really focusing on that because I think uh, high harmonic generation in solids, bulk solids, uh, it is pretty much in its childhood still. Uh, it's a hot topic, very much hot topic to generate high order harmonics on, in bulk solids. Uh, since these kind of sources are not very well developed yet. We are not really focusing on that. Of course, if someone is interested in, in uh, doing such an experiment, we can provide equipment uh, for that. But by default, we are not focusing on that kind of uh, things. Yeah, and it's really, really complex uh, for sure. Uh, so we are using gases for harmonic generation uh, because that is something that has been known for quite some time now. We will have we have also uh, beam lines, or we will have soon. They are already implemented under implementation here in, in one of our biggest laboratories. Uh, we have surface high harmonic generation where you use uh, the radiation that is reflected from your solid target. So there is no propagation inside uh, the bulk medium, but from its surface uh, there is a reflection uh, when you generate uh, the plasma on the surface, and that's. Uh, another kind of source for at the second pulses and we are going to have those as well it has some uh, advantages compared to gas based hag but of course it has some drawbacks the drawback is that again this is a technology that is not as well known and and uh, long developed as uh, high energy generation in gases thank you yeah i mean really very promising <laughs> and thank you so much for this really nice talk and for all of you watching on YouTube, thank you for joining and for uh, supporting the Apple Fridays. And I uh, hope to see you soon. Next week, we're going to have another talk and it's going to be the last of the season. So take care, everybody. Uh, Thanks everyone for watching. Yeah.